Now there are an extraordinary number of ways to go about creating text effects inside Photoshop. You could have entire courses on just creating text effects in Photoshop. You could have several courses. And that's the cool thing about it is that there's so many different possibilities and so many different ways of trying new text effects that it's virtually endless, it's limitless. You could, you know, people are still discovering new things today with just trying different things, you know, maybe things they've never used before. But in this lesson we're going to we're going to keep it relatively simple and do a really kind of cool effect that you've probably seen on packaging and in magazines and stuff like that. In fact, I'm going to show you the end result of what we're going to be uh, looking at achieving here. And you can see this right here is a number of different, you notice some halftone elements we've got in there. And there's a number of different ways of stacking, beveling, and layer styles on top of each other. And that's what we're going to do in this lesson. And you'll notice it's not that many layers, you know? So it's not, it doesn't seem that comp, it looks complex, but it really isn't as complicated as you might think. So. Let's go over here and rebuild this. So I'm going to go over and create into my new document. And to begin, we obviously need to have some text. So I'm going to go over here in the toolbar, grab my text tool, and let's just click inside the document and set a text layer. And I'm going to type the word party. And we, we want to use a really bold font in this case. And you'll know you'll see up in the, if I double click on that text layer, you'll see up here in the options bar, we're using Gil Sans Ultra Bold. Really, really thick font there. And I'm going to keeping, I'm going to keep that letter spacing relatively wide because it's going to separate the elements for the next thing I'm going to do, which is turn this text layer into paths. So I'm going to go over here to the, to the layer itself, hold down my control key or right click right on that layer on the empty part of the layer and you're going to get this menu and we're going to go right down here to create work path. And if we go over to the paths panel, here it is saved as a path. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that and save it and we'll just call it party. So that path is saved. So I don't necessarily need this text layer anymore, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn off its visibility, just in case I need to come back to it. Then let's go and create a new blank layer, and let's go in here and modify these letters. Here's the cool thing about them being turned into paths, is I can go in here and grab the path selection tool and just modify each one of these letters really in a very different way. I'm going to press Command or Control T and free transform this up. Control or right click right on there. Let's access some of these distortion tools. And we'll just kind of bend that in there and maybe put that out there. And I'm going to do that to each one. Let's just kind of make this one a little skinny. And we'll distort this one to kind of bend that in there. And I'm going to come back and, and modify these a little bit more in a little, in a little bit after we've modified these. And so let's just kind of push these together. And again, we're just going to distort. Maybe we'll make that one kind of fit in there. And that looks good. We'll bring this T over here and let's transform that. And I'm doing it freely. And we'll go ahead and distort this one a little bit. And I'm going to modify these a little bit more in just a minute. In fact, let's make that one a little bit smaller. But this gets giving you the possibilities of using paths in order to create very interesting effects because you can pretty much have, uh, apply all these transformation tools to paths as well as images so let's just bring that down there so let's grab the path selection tool and select all these let's bring them back to the center and now let's go in here and modify these individually I'm going to go over here into that path selection tool and grab the direct selection tool so now we can grab individual points and really kind of give these letters a little bit of a freaky look Bring that point down there. Let's take the bottom of this R and really drag it down here, maybe. That's grabbing the line. Let's grab the point. Just go crazy and do all kinds of really neat stuff to this. Let's take these T and make it make the lines go a little bit crazier. Well, let's kind of push that right there. And we'll grab this Y and let's just go in here and just play with this a little bit. Let's bring that center point down. Let's kind of squash that in a little bit. Let's make this a little bit thinner too. All kinds of possibilities. And these are vector shapes, which means they're resolution independent. So we, you know we're not changing any pixels. We can go in here and just modify this all day and do all kinds of cool stuff. So let's assume I've got it to the point where I like it. It looks good. Let's go ahead and load it as a selection and get uh, get the effects going. So with the all, with all the paths selected, I'm going to go in the paths panel and click this third icon over here to load that as a selection. On that blank layer, I'm just going to press command delete, it will be control backspace and it's going to fill it with white in the background area. 
And I want to work against a gray background so I can see the visibility of everything. So I'm going to go hold down my command key and click the new layer icon, press shift delete, use 50% gray and click OK. Now we can see that text on top of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually fill this with a color. Let's lock the transparency of the text and instead of white, let's just use this blue right here, option delete. And there we have that. Now let's start building uh, the many layers of this text. Well, I'm going to go ahead and Actually, we're going to go ahead and apply a layer style to this layer. Let's go ahead and select that. Go into the layer style menu. We're going to choose stroke. And you can see the stroke is being applied. We're going to actually choose a color. We're going to use, get, get that kind of orange color that you saw. About like that. And let's take, make sure the positioning is for the outside. And we're going to take this really big to about 40. It really pushes it out there. It looks pretty cool. So. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to create a duplicate of that layer. Let's go ahead and just press Command J or Control J, and it will go ahead and create a duplicate of that layer. And let's go in and modify that layer style. I'm going to go in there into the double click on that effects icon, select the stroke again. This time, we're going to take the size to half to around 20, and we're going to change the color to white. And there you see we've got that effect stacking on top of each other. Looking pretty cool. Make this a little bit smaller, so make it about 18. Looks good. All right. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I want to do is separate these elements. I want to actually take these effects, these stroked effects, and put them on their own layer. So I can add layer styles to, to even those. So we're going to go into the layer, and I'm going to control or right click right on the layer. And we're going to go down here. Actually, no, you got to right click. Control or right click right on the effects icon right here. And right down here at the bottom, it's going off screen, so let me drag this out so you can see. Control or right click right on the effects icon. Right down here at the bottom, there's an item called Create Layer. When I select that, notice what happens. It retains the text, but it's now put that stroke on its own layer as a complete shape. Very cool. So let's do the same thing down here, Create Layer. So we've got two instances of the original text here, and I only still need one. So I'm actually going to take this one and actually throw it away. So now all we have is the blue text, that white stroke, and the orange stroke. Now they're all on their own individual layers, and we can apply st uh, layer styles to each of these now. So let's go to the orange shape there. I'm going to go into the layer styles again. Let's actually double click on that layer icon, and I'm going to go ahead and put a drop shadow on there, and apply a bevel and emboss on that. And we're going to go ahead and turn off Use Global Light, and right in here inside the shading, there's got this little uh, the altitude setting here, if you click that little target, you can move it around and basically repositions the light source. And what I want to do is actually put it toward more towards the center, and I'm going to increase the size and the depth, and notice what happens. It's giving me kind of a plastic edge look. Very cool. You can reposition the light depending on where you want the light source to be. And I think I want that size a little bit smaller, make it around 7. So you can see it's giving me a pretty interesting effect there. I'm going to add one more thing to this layer, before I get out of the, this layer style, we're going to add in gradient overlay. So let's highlight that. And you'll see by default it does a black and white linear gradient. All we're going to do is change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And look what we get. We get kind of a cool variation of that base color, that base orange color. It's in fact, it's probably a little much. If it is, you can go ahead and change it to soft light. And it's a little bit more subtle. You can even drop the opacity a little bit. Let's take that to about 75. Cool. Now it's a layer style, we can of course go back and change that anytime we want. So let's move on to the white stroked layer. Let's go, or the white shape layer. And let's double click on that, open up the layer style there. And here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a drop shadow. And we're going to make that drop shadow relatively sharp edge. Let's give it a, a size of around 2. And that looks good. And let's turn off use global light so we're getting the same light source. And let's also apply a little bevel there. And we're only going to be able to see the shadows, so let's uh, kind of position that target right about here again. Just so it gives a little bit of an edge shape to that. If we wanted, we could give that highlight. Since we're on white, we can give it a little bit more of a gray. And change that blend mode to multiply. You'll see us, it gives us a little bit of an edge there. Just kind of defining that edge on that white a little bit. Looks cool. Okay. So we'll hit OK there. Now we're on to the text itself. 
So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that, open up the layer styles there, and here we're going to simply add a, well, a very small drop shadow, and we're going to take the size this time down to zero. So it's a nice and sharp edged, let's zoom in so we can see what's going on here. So see, it's a nice and sharp edged little shadow there. I'm going to leave the opacity at 75. I'm going to activate the bevel and emboss, turn off use global light like we did before, and this time we're going to make the size really big and increase the depth a little bit. We're going to reposition that lighting right above here and you'll see that by doing that it gives me a little bit more defined shape more of a plastic look on the lettering pretty cool effect well I'm gonna add one more thing to this layer we're gonna add an inner shadow and we're gonna go over here and change the color of this shadow let's go over here and click and we're gonna get a really really light blue I'll click OK I'm gonna change the blend mode from multiply to color dodge you notice what's going on there. Let's turn off global light here and reposition this uh, shadow. And you can also go inside the text and actually move it around. So see what it's giving me is a really kind of like an edge glow there. Just, enhan just enhances it a little bit. And this is a cool way of stacking layer styles just to create very interesting effects. So I think I like that. It looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now we're almost there. Just got to add a couple more things. And that's those halftone elements that we created. So let's create a new blank layer. And I'm going to press Shift Delete. And again, we're going to fill this with gray. And it didn't necessarily need the, fill, the gray fill. That was just out of habit. But what we are going to do is well, actually, we want to fill it with black. That's a mistake. So let's just set our default colors by hitting the D key. I'm going to press Option Delete. Now we've got the layer filled with black. Now we're going to grab our gradient tool, set white in the foreground, and let's grab that foreground to transparent gradient tool. And it's going to draw from the top to the bottom a very small gradient. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just give it a little bit of a stroke right there. So we get a little bit of variation there. Now we're going to go into the filter menu and go to pixelate color halftone. And we're going to take all the channels here and take them all to zero. So we're going to zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. And the max radius is really a judgment call here, but unfortunately it doesn't give us a preview when we choose a number. So I'm going to actually put in 10 and see what we get there. That's not bad. So, notice the dots are black and the objects are white. I'm just going to invert the values there because because that's what I want is actually the white, the, the dots themselves to be white. So, let me load this area as a selection. I'm just going to go into channels. And since this layer is the only thing visible, I'm just going to command or control click right on the RGB channel and it will load the light areas, all the white areas as a selection. And since it's just black and white, and all I want is the white area, that works perfectly. So let's turn off that layer. I'm going to go and create a new blank layer. And let's fill the selection with white. So I'm going to press Option Delete, and we'll fill that area in. And there we have our halftone pattern. Well, I'm going to create two duplicates of this, because we're going to do a couple more things. I'm going to press Command-J twice. So we've got two duplicates, three total versions of this halftone. So let's turn off these two duplicates and, and concentrate on this one first. I'm going to take this one and drag it down right above that text right there, and we're going to create a clipping group. I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key, and you'll see if I drag between the layers, we get those little overlapping circles. Click in between them, and now it clips it inside there. Then we'll simply change the blend mode of that layer to overlay. And we can just move this and reposition this, and look how cool that looks. So one last thing is the background. Let's go back to that gray layer, go into my swatches. I'm going to get this little dark red color here, and I'm going to press Option Delete and fill that in. And let's go grab those two halftone duplicates that we had. So let's I'm gonna hold, click on this one, hold down the shift key, and select them both, and drag them down the layer order until they're right above that red background layer, as you can see. So I'm going to turn them on, and let's select the top one and go into the Edit menu, go to Transform, Flip Vertical. And I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain my movement and just drag this up until those halftone dots are right at the the right at the top there and we'll take this one select this layer and we'll move this down until it's right about there so let's lock the transparency on this layer and we still have that red color for the background still set as our foreground color so I'm gonna press option delete and fill that layer let's go into this halftone layer lock the transparency option delete it fills that red in and just so you can see if I turn off that red background layer that's what we have and now it's just a matter of changing the blend modes of either one of these. We can't see them because they're blending in with the background. So if we take the top one here and change its blend mode 
to screen and take the bottom one and change its blend mode to multiply, there we have a very cool, very eye-catching text effect all built right there inside Photoshop. So you can see the possibilities of using paths, layer styles, and just a few filters to create interesting effects, and you'll get very interesting text effects.